This is my tutorial on how to use the blend tool in Illustrator and I'm just going to show you um, how to have a go and create this um, interesting typography using the blend tool and um, this is one of the quite simple um, starter ways that you can use this um, tool in Illustrator. Um, so I'm just going to move that up out of the way so I've got that there as reference and we can come back to that later. The first thing that I'm going to show you very quickly is the basics of the blend tool, how it works, um, what you might use it for. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, just explain to you that it's better in this case to work on a black background. So what I've done is I've created a black um, rectangle and then I've locked that by going to object, lock, uh, and that now isn't going to move, it's there permanently and that's going to be my artboard um, where I'm going to work to create this. So just in case you are wondering how I've made that background. The first thing that I want you to do then is select your ellipse tool and we're just going to make a circle. So if you actually hold down Alt to draw the circle from the middle, begin to draw and then hold down your shift button, that will create a circle that is the right size. What we don't want to be doing is working in black, so I'm just going to keep choose a nice bright colour which is going to be yellow for now. Um, and then we need to just drag this out and copy the circle. So holding down Alt, dragging, holding Shift so it stays in line, so you've got your circles in line. Um, that will copy the image out. Um, and then I'm going to change the colour of the second um, circle stroke to say something like bright like pink. Um, and then we are actually going to use the blend tool to join those two. Um, circles together so we don't want any fill on these at the moment we just want the strokes on drag over to select both then collect your blend tool um, what is important at this moment is that when you're using the blend tool you're thinking about where you're actually clicking so you can see I've collected that tool I'm clicking in the middle here and I'm going down to the bottom one and I'm clicking in the middle there and that what that will do is it will provide um, the blended steps between the two. Now we want to edit this because this isn't how we want it to look. So if you double click your blend tool it will give you the options and the options will come up. If they don't come up there we're having problems you can go into object blend and blend options in there as well. So that's two different ways to get to that information. Um, what we don't want to do, we don't want to use the smooth colour today. We want to use the specified steps. So I'm going to cha change the spacing to specified steps and then we're going to edit this number here. We also want to make it in preview so that we can see what happens. So I'm just going to maybe take it down to say 50, see what that looks like. And you can see then automatically that we're beginning to get that sort of slinky type, um, spirography type effect where um, you can see between the individual lines. Now if you wanted to, you could actually... Um, expand this whole thing so that you've got all the individual circles to play with. At this stage we're not going to bother doing that because that um, basically is going to make it a little bit difficult because you then got all these individual circles and that might be too difficult for you to deal with. You can also work with the different orientations but at this stage that isn't going to make any difference. So just click on OK and there you have um, a very simple blended line. Now if we, if you wanted to try doing the same thing again and I'm just gonna, you don't need to copy this, I just want to show you what I'm gonna do to just see, just to example to show how um, you can use this differently. We're gonna just release that and try again. I'm gonna get rid of that line in the middle. Um, and just to show you that if I put, chose the different points on the circuit, it, give, it would give a different effect. So, for instance, if I um, clicked on the outer point of the circle, on that side, and the outer point of the circle, this side, the blend would become like this, um, rather than like that. And obviously, that can then give you a whole load of different options uh, and things that you can do to play around with um, the different shapes. So, just take some time to have a little play around maybe try some different shapes and things, obviously things like stars work well or um, polygons and things like that can work really well. So have a little go maybe after you've done this um, tutorial playing around with different shapes as well because you can get some really interesting effects. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that one because I, I've made a one already here and I just want to really quickly show you how I made that example. So this one we've used a very simple two um, colour interchange and this one here we've obviously got one, two, three, four, five different colours. So I'm just going to expand that to show you how I made that so that you can make that ready for using for your text. Um, you don't need to obviously do this stage yet. I'm just going to release this and then show you what I've done and in fact what I'm going to do is um, just select those and make the font, the stroke to one point so you can see a bit clearer. Um, if ever you wanted to go back into your um, work and see what's going on underneath, so for instance I don't need this line but I can't select it any other way, it wasn't selecting when I tried to select it without going into preview mode. This is actually preview mode. The way that you get into preview mode from, from the shortcut is if you press Command and Y, it will turn uh, the image into preview, or you can see up in view, and then you can go into overprint preview and pixel preview in there. Um, so I'm just going to delete that one. Uh, and then what you need to do is select all of your circles. So hopefully you've had a go making your circles and dragging them out. At this stage, it doesn't really matter how far the distance is. Um, it's just a case of adding in the colour. So you want, if you want to copy mine, you want to um, choose exactly the same colours. So the bright pink, the purple, the blue, the limey green, and then the yellow. So if you make your circles those colours, select them all, click to your blend tool, and then we are going to do a link between each one, stopping on each point before we move forward. So click on your top one move to your next one, move to your next one, move to your next one, and go to the final one. And you can see it's not obviously set up as we want. We don't want this to be smooth colour, but again, this is a, a really good thing that you can use for blending and things like that with shapes in Illustrator if you wanted to have a go doing that. Click on specified steps, make sure you're on preview, let's try 50 again. Yeah, 50 looks good. So we're going to give it 50 specified steps and click OK. Um, the important thing about this is that we've got that then to use in a minute. So I'm going to just move this off the artboard, move that along, and we're going to start with our letter W. So the first thing that you need to do is select your pen tool, and then you're simply going to just write very carefully, carefully as you can, Trying to be as accurate as you can, and if you wanted to, you can put guides on to help you want to put your smart guides on. Um, trying to make sure that that is accurate. Mine's not particularly accurate, actually. So there we go. That's all a bit wonky. So you might want to just collect your white arrow and spend a bit of time trying to just make that as accurate as possible moving in the points etc. There we go, I'm just going to go with that for now. Once you've done that, you need to collect your shape and then collect the um, blend tool line that you just made and then you're going to replace the spine. Now what that means is, instead of having your circles on this line, you want the circles to be on this line. So you, it's quite a uh, nifty little um, technique. So we go into Object, Blend, and then Replace Spine. And that will automatically jump across for you onto your lettering. You see how simple that and quick that is to do. Um, and now you have your letter W all made, ready to go. So that's the first one that we've done. And that's obviously a bit simple and not too difficult to do. So I'm glad that's uh, been quite easy. The O is going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down here, go into preview mode and just show you really quickly what's going on. So you can see we've got lots and lots and lots of circles all overlapped in there. And it's the same technique basically as the one above. I'm just going to actually release this one that I've copied out um, and that way it makes it easier for me. Um, what I want really is that centre spine, oh yeah, let's drag that out a minute and give that a colour so I can see how big it is. And I'm just going to get rid of that. You don't need to obviously do any of this because 
um, you're not at the stage yet. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to create uh, your larger concentric circles ready for uh, replacing onto this, which is going to be your spine. So if I drag this one out, um, undo the blend, you can see how big my circles are. So my circles, if I open up the transform palette a minute, you can see how big they are. They are 46 by 46, so you could make them 50, 5 centimeters or 50 millimeters is a good size for that circle. And again, you need to do the same thing. They need to be one point. Doesn't really matter how big the distance is when you're drawing them out. Um, just make sure that you've got them all in a line. And then you can see I've actually chosen a different order, a color order on this one. Uh, and the reason I did that was because when I made the circle shape, I didn't like the way it looked using this um, color spectrum. So I changed it so I did the green followed by the orange, followed by the pink, followed by the blue, and then another blue in there. Um, but I'll show you how to change that in a minute. So again, you need to select those, click on your blend tool, and then click on each point as you go along. on the final point. No, let's not let me do that. Probably we don't need that last one anyway. Okay, so click on that. Double click on your blend options. Make sure it's on specified steps. You shouldn't have to keep doing this on yours. I'm not sure why it keeps defaulting to that smooth colour one. Um, that's just a quirk. I don't know what's happening. So yours should already be set to this. Set it onto something like 50, maybe 30 might be a bit better for this one. Click OK. So then we've got that created. We then need to make our little circle here. 26 by 26 we'll say is a good size. So if you want to create your circle shape. Go into your path through transform palette or you could have just set that up to make your circle that size uh, and then get rid of that one because I don't want to use that one for now. Then I'm going to replace the spine using this one onto here. So object, blend, replace spine. And what you can see on this one is that um, the circle is not complete. Now I haven't found a way in order to make the circle go all the way around. It never will. So I found another way to get around that problem so that the circle becomes a complete circle. And it's going to involve going into preview mode. Uh, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And it's also going to involve um, using the pen tool. So you want to zoom in, go into preview mode, and you'll see if you click on this one here, that middle circle, that is the one that is the one that you want to edit now to add in some points. So what you can do with this, which is really helpful, is you can add in points to your shape and it will add extra circles in. So if we add points here, all the way along this side in even spacings, it will actually add new points in on our actual version. And if you're happy to go back, you can see as you go, uh, you are... Oops, Actually adding in, it's easier to do it in the preview mode, points. And then when you come out, you can see that actually you have got a circle, a whole circle shape. Now, what I didn't like about this circle when I made it originally was um, this kind of odd shape here. I wanted it to be a, di a kind of different colour. I, I preferred these colours. So I did have to edit the um, colours a bit on each of the individual larger circles. First of all, I'm just going to edit the blending steps because there's too many there, obviously. Let's try 20. Yeah, maybe 18. That looks a bit better. And then just double check that your um, stroke is on one point. Um, and then what you can do... In fact, I might even take that down just a little bit more, maybe to 15. 
Okay. Then what you can do is you can actually go back in with your white arrow and if you've got your um, smart guides on, you can actually see um, where the edges are of the actual paths and you can click on them and try changing the colours. So I'm going to click on that pink one and possibly change it to let's try blue or no green. I'm going to try and find this one on this side and change it blue and then maybe try that one and change it pink. So you can edit this until you've got to the point where you're happy with your colours. Um, I do think that it's nice to get in a bit of um, yellow in there. Again, if you're if you're struggling between finding the different um, circles, you can go back into the preview and click. So just have a bit of a play around trying out some different colours. You see what happens if you put too much of the different colour in there then you get a weird effect where, let me just show you that again, you get this weird effect where it doesn't quite look like it's a finished circle, you get some kind of odd distorted perspective effect. So I'm going to go with something a bit like that, because I think that way it looks more like a sort of generalised circle. And what I'm going to do, I might even take it down a notch. You see, even I have to come come back in and edit things as we go. There we go. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Might even go back into that one and change that one a bit too. So it's all about sort of playing around and seeing how you do it. Now, the next thing is how to create the actual centre. So if you see uh, on this one here, if I drag that over, I have got this interesting centre point going on, which sort of gives it a kind of more finished bit of a pow look so what I've actually done here is another trick using the um, circle blend tool and I'll drag those in so you can see um, and I've basically just created another series of separate circles that I've added in to the into the middle so again you want to select your circle tool uh, it's best probably if to make your circle, you'd work within the actual area that you're doing it, so over your O. So if you want to just lock that, either by holding down Apple II or going to Object Lock, that will hold that in place, and then you can work as you want from there. So select your um, Ellipse tool by clicking on L, or getting it from the toolbox, hold down Alt again, drag from the centre, mine wasn't quite in the centre, but that doesn't matter and then hold down shift to get a lovely circle. I've made mine yellow because I think that works quite well. What I'm going to do is copy, which is command C and command F to paste on top. I'm then going to scale it by clicking on S and return to bring up the scale box. And then I'm going to scale it by maybe 75. Let's just look on preview. Maybe a little bit less, maybe try 60. Yeah, good. So we want to make that this the same kind of size as that. Click on OK, and then select both of those. Um, oops, you want to make sure that your inner circle is blue if you're following the same colours as me, or you can try something else. Select the outside circle, and then we want to add in the steps between the two. So if we click on the middle one and then click on the outside, that will then let us um, create the blend between the two. Again, I don't know why mine isn't going specifically to the specified steps, but that's fine. We can just edit that now. And then you don't want too many circles here because you want to get this interesting sort of effect. So I've done 15. You could try something less, like 10, 10 steps. If you don't want it too dark, but I think maybe 15 looks quite good because it gives you that nice pop of colour. So click on OK, and that's done. We're now going to repeat the same process, or you are. I'm not going to show you it again because it's um, what I've just created, only with a smaller circle here, this size, and then fit that into the middle. Delete that. 
and then all that you need to do after that is just literally to copy across your W so that you've got two versions of your W I might actually just centre that up it's not in the centre and then there you go you have your wow text created using techniques from the blend tool um, don't forget that you can actually go back in and edit the colours if you wanted to change the colour from this side so that it was um, opposites. Um, don't forget that you can come back to this and if you wanted to add some more steps in to make it a bit darker you can. Which I think I might do. And there you have your finished result which I think is actually quite quirky and quite a lot of fun to make. Hope you've enjoyed it and if you have then you might share the link to my tutorial with other people. Thank you very much.